okay. these videos are actually like almost uh, precisely like the urban mobility version of a car channel where uh, uh, where I give it a, a urban mobility score. So instead of like a, a, a car ranking, I would give it, you know, points on public transport, b- bikes and walking. So it's kind of a play. And some people in the comments have ca- caught on to that uh, of, uh, of, of automobile reviews. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman. And that was George Liu. Uh, George is a PhD doctoral candidate uh, from the Technical University there in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. And uh, he also is involved with the Urban Cycling Institute. Uh, in fact, he is the uh, primary person producing content on the Urban Cycling Institute's YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, you, well, we talk a little bit about uh, the content that he's been creating and how that's evolved over the years and then we also talk a little bit about uh, the designing cycling city the masters class uh, that's going to be coming up at the end of September uh, so be sure to hold on to, to get the details on that class and how you can sign up because there's still an opportunity for you to get involved with that and then uh, just to you know, keep it interesting. He also decided to start a company, <laughs> a retail business um, based out of Vancouver Island, which is where he lives now. Uh, so it, it, we cover a lot of ground and it's a lot of fun and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So let's get right to it with George. George, it is so wonderful to have you on the Active Towns podcast. Welcome. Thanks, and uh, great to meet you for the first time in yeah. uh, video live feed form. In John. video live feed format, yeah, yeah. we've we've uh, tread a lot of the same ground over the years. Uh, I've uh, spent uh, you know a fair amount of time you know popping around the University of Amsterdam, uh, meeting up with Marco, meeting up with Meredith, and, uh, and and so I know we've we've been in a lot of the same places, uh, but uh, this is our first time you know actually connecting. And I was in Austin, uh, and you were. In Austin, oh. Austin, exactly. So we've been tiptoeing yeah, around yeah. each other. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, again, I, I'm yeah. so delighted to have you, uh, you know, on board here with the Active Towns podcast uh, for a little bit of a conversation, a little bit of an update on what you're up to. Uh, but what's probably best is, uh, since I know a little bit about your background, I don't certainly know at all. Uh, why don't you just take a moment to, you know, introduce yourself? Sure. I. Uh, my name is George Liu, and uh, I am the online education strategist at uh, the Urban Cycling Institute. Uh, I also do work on a consultancy basis with uh, Humankind, which is a consulting urban planning, urban change agency in Rotterdam. Um, and my latest venture, uh, I'm now on Vancouver Island, Canada, is uh, selling e-bikes. So I went from the education uh, uh, academic side to more of a, a retail side. And I think uh, that's that's quite a scalable venture. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of learning. It's been a big transition. Uh, but hopefully, uh, I think it, it all contributes to this grand goal of getting more bikes on the road, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. So, wow, that that's a lot of big change. Now, you've been over in the Netherlands for several years. Is that correct? Uh, it's been four. So I was over and then I got out uh, March 2020, uh, exactly when, when COVID hit. So I kind of got one of the last empty flights out of there. I uh, decided it's better to weather out COVID in Canada with the family rather than uh, staying there. Um, cause if it's, if you're locked down, it's good to be with people that you love, you know? So, and now we're on the other side of that, <laughs> which is kind of <laughs> what a cool experience, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. So yeah, my last visit to the Netherlands was, uh, in the fall of 2019. So just a few months mm-hmm. before, you know, uh, you know, COVID happened and, and the whole lockdown. So, okay. I was wondering about that because I knew you were working on your doctoral program yeah. and we'll talk a little bit about that in, in just a moment. And I was like, what? gosh, I wonder if George is like still there or, or <laughs> where he's at. So, uh, so since I mentioned the doctoral program and the fact that you were over there for about four years leading up to March, 2020, uh, what were you? studying what were you researching and uh, and how did you get uh, you know hooked up with those those uh, you know crazy folks over at the urban cycling institute 
Yeah. So uh, actually, my uh, a plug here, the first of many plugs is my thesis defense is going to be uh, October 4th uh, of 2022. Uh, so if you want to come and see it, uh, uh, the defense will be in Eindhoven, the Netherlands, where I'll be getting my degree for my PhD. Uh, details to follow. I'll tweet about it and such. Um, how, how I got on this journey was uh, I, I, I was doing a, a master's degree in, in human factors. So this is um, automated vehicles. And I got really interested in self-driving cars. You know, like six years ago was when when Tesla and these, uh, the, the hype, right, was, was really still in the hype phase before it, it, electric cars really became popular. Um, and uh, and I, I realized like, Maybe, maybe that was going down the wrong road, right? And, and I wasn't getting a joy out of the research uh, in human factors. It's a very interesting field, but I was uh, around a lot of engineers and I figured, well, you know, I think my interests are really in the, the social sphere. So uh, that's when I decided to take a look around and I found the Urban Cycling Institute in Amsterdam and also uh, the, a, a PhD program that was being funded called uh, Smart Cycling Futures, which started up about five years ago. Uh, and I decided to hop on that boat, sent in an application, and uh, not many months later in uh, about September of uh, 2016, I found myself in Eindhoven, the Netherlands, starting a PhD journey. And what's cool about uh, some of the Scandinavian countries as well as the Netherlands um, is that uh, they pay their PhDs as a uh, salaried position. So just like a professor or such, none of this like weird scholarship bursary kind of deal where you kind of have to pay half your tuition. It's a very serious you know matter where you get paid a salary, you get a contract as an employee, and they really give you the stability to um you know uh have a proper income <laughs> with your you know student debt that you've accumulated and and even have the opportunity to pay some of that down all while you know focusing on your research so it's a it's a very cool financial arrangement over there where you're treated as uh, they literally call it like a as a pro professor in training, you know, that's kind of how they see PhDs rather than a glorified, you know, research master's student in yeah. purgatory for four years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's fascinating stuff. And I feel like I've, I've come to know you over the years, uh, simply because uh, I've spent a lot of time, you know, you know, working with a lot of the same people that you've been working with and uh, your, your face, you, you've been the face of the Urban Cycling Institute uh, for a fair amount of time, at least on the content side. And, uh, and, and even some of the, the coursework, like the Coursera uh, coursework, the designing, uh, what, what's the name of that uh, Coursera uh, course? Uh, there, there's a few now. There's, there's a four. few now. So we're we're moving into the, a few years the original back. Unraveling the Cycling City. So Unraveling the Cycling City. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. I highly recommend that. It's uh, out on Coursera. Uh, you're one of the, uh, the the faculty, you know, as, as part of that course. And so that's really when I think I felt like I was getting to know who George was <laughs> just because of all the, the coursework. But I noticed here out on the YouTube channel, um, uh, you, you, you've definitely kind of taken over in terms of the, the, the face of the content that's out on the Urban Cycling Institute's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, talk a little bit about what the, the positioning is and, and what you all have been doing here and, uh, and explain the, uh, the City Unboxed and the Urban Mobility Review. Right. So before I go into the YouTube channel, it's sure. uh, indeed I am the face, but I would say uh, Marco Tupromostut, uh, who tweets as uh, at uh, Cycling Feats Professor, he's yeah. the thumbs of the operation. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we're kind of like all, all our social media platforms are run by by, by different people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I'm glad so, you, you know, mentioned that. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that you mentioned that because uh, you're not particularly, you know, busy out on Twitter. You, you're, you're out there a little bit, but uh, you're, you're, you're not really pushing the stuff out. But Marco definitely is is pushing that content out frequently. Oh, yeah. He loves yeah. the thumbs. So yeah, and yeah. then LinkedIn is a fellow named uh, Trey Han, who's also at the Urban Cycling Institute. OK, so uh, Trey's doing that. OK. Yeah. So he, he runs Bicycle User Experience. Yeah. So we, we've each kind of found our own platform. And, okay. and it's interesting because every platform has their own you know style content and their own audience, actually. So right. 
so right, the YouTube audience, probably there's a lot of crossover, but, but I suspect a large number of people just maybe not even have Twitter accounts, right? So right. Yeah. Uh, it, it's interesting to, to see the different personalities come through. Um, and hopefully the, the end product is, is somewhat coherent, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good good stuff. I'm glad you made made that point too. Uh, mm-hmm. As a single operator here with the Active Towns channel, um, I find myself uh, in all of the platforms, and it's kind of, uh, you know, whether it's over on Facebook or Instagram or you know uh, Twitter and LinkedIn and and here on YouTube. So it's uh, I, I I sometimes feel like I've got a split personality because I'm trying to you know kind of adjust the that communication across many different platforms. So I'm glad you and mentioned And it's very that. overwhelming. Oh, to, it is. To yeah. it no, it's a full-time right? job, so it's, for it's sure. A ton yeah. of work. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Okay. Uh, so, so with that context being said, um, what are we, you know, what has this evolved into? So the, the YouTube kind of started as fun. Uh, if you look back at the Ooh, that's uh, looking back at the earlier videos. Maybe you shouldn't do that. But anyways, (laughs) if if you want, uh, I started reviewing. So I was part of my PhD. I was doing literature reviews where you you, you comb through academic papers. And uh, and I thought, well, you know, I might as well, as I'm doing these reviews, I might as well put them in video. So they're like mini lectures and summaries of papers. I felt they would be pretty useful for, you know, masters or PhD level who happen to come across these papers. And I just kind of summarize. Summarize. Each paper is about 8,000 words. I try and get it down to 1,000 words. And I put a little video up top. Um, and that's kind of like my mini lecture on each paper that I find to be especially interesting to me. Yeah. And, and that's where the channel started. Uh, uh, but okay. as, mm, and then it progressed into a series of ride casts where I would strap GoPros on bikes. Yeah. Uh, and I would talk to interview on the go. So that happened for a while. I'm going to take, take you back to 2019 mm-hmm. here. Boom. Oh, boom. Boom. Uh Uh-oh. This is the, because you mentioned that you were doing these reviews. So this is actually Mm -hmm. cyclingresearchreview.com. And uh, the reason why I got, I chuckled and wanted to uh, put this out here and and it is, it it does have the, the Urban Cycling Institute logo there up in the corner. Um, And yes, to your point, you were like, you know, going through and, and kind of, uh, divining out uh, what was covered in, you know, in the paper. And uh, the the real reason why I wanted to pull this up is to, you know, g- give a shout out and pay some homage to the, the late, great uh, Ben Hamilton Bailey. Uh, just a, an absolute, you know, amazing individual and somebody I had the, the great honor to, to mm-hmm. meet uh, prior to his passing. But he was somebody who really delved into the, you know, the concept of shared space. And so, yeah, sorry, sorry for that little uh, interruption in, in that, you know, realm. So it sounds like this was the early days, the 2019 and early days of, of like really kind of looking at that leader, uh, that research and then divining stuff out and then books and then it looks like out on the, the YouTube channel now, it's it's graduated to still some book-related stuff because I see over here, boom, there you go, a book review. A few book reviews. Yeah. But, yeah. You, you know, I kind of follow the audience. The book reviews were fun because yeah. uh, I was reading. I kind of try and do what I'm going to do anyways. Like yeah, if yeah, I'm yeah. reading these books, I'll do, I'll think of some YouTube video to do on the books. Right. Uh, the, the City and Box uh, series was like, I want to do uh, uh, some traveling, you know, uh, uh, yeah. as COVID was riding me down. So I thought, well, this is a great opportunity to go traveling and get right. all my expenses paid by uh, this organization called the European Institute of uh, Technology. Right. They started up around 2020 or so, just when COVID hit. Um, and uh, they sponsor some of the courses, uh, not the, a few of the Coursera ones. And then there's a few on their platform, which is uh, 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 urbanmobilitycourses.eu. Okay. Uh, and, and then they, along with that package, I was like, uh, do you guys want to do some YouTube videos? <laughs> and, and they was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's, let's throw it in. So, so all of these, uh, ended up being funded as, as, uh, as part of like one organization who sponsored YouTube videos, who, uh, helped us get some courses running. Uh, and, and it was just a, a great experimental phase of, uh, a video production for me. So right. I, I got to do a bit of everything, uh, and got it paid for. 
and I got to travel and also do some studio work. And now I've accumulated uh, quite a bit of camera equipment. So now, you know, this conversation looks much better. So, um, me too. Yeah, it's, it's been a journey. <laughs> I like to joke. So thank and say, you, EIT I, Urban Mobility. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like to, to yeah. joke and say that, uh, you know, I'm a, a, a health promotion professional, uh, 30 years experience uh, turned, you know, <laughs> storyteller and turned, you know, podcast producer and, you know, videographer and content creator on YouTube. So it's, uh, I had to teach myself a lot of this. Now, how about you? I mean, did you kind of, were you, you know, kind of a film and, and photography, you know, buff beforehand, or did you have to kind of ramp up and get, get educated in this as well? Uh, I started out with GoPros uh, yep, and a yep. cell phone. So uh, I had yep. no idea what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, and you can tell, you know, earlier yeah. videos in the channel. Um, but uh, YouTube is great because you can self-teach. It's like a, uh, it's an infinite loop, right? You do more yeah. YouTube, you find people who show you how to do more YouTube and you just kind of get sucked into the whole platform. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and, and, you know, like there's the Urban Cycling Institute channel. When I log in, it's like all bike stuff. My right. personal channel is like uh, photography camera reviews, like top 10 uh -huh. lenses of 2021, right? Like right. that's the kind of junk that I'm actually looking at on YouTube. Right. Cause you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're the output. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're probably constantly trying, like I am, it's like constantly trying to, um, you know, up your game and, and your, your sort of your, you know, skill levels, you know, et cetera, yeah. whether it's camera or whether it's post-production editing and things, are you doing all of that? Uh, I, I found a great editor who has been doing the whole City Unbox series. Uh, okay. Jedwin Mock is, okay. is his name. He's based in Toronto. Okay. Um, so, you know, if you love the editing here, he does a great a great job of it. Uh, currently, I'm working with him on a few other projects. So, so Marco is releasing a full length keynote talk from the Cycling Research Board of last year, where he, okay. you know, uh, really puts uh, lights of fire to urban mobility professionals and research. Uh, so that's going to be probably the next video. And then we're working on a few shorts based on that talk, which is uh, nice. going to be very interesting. Uh, back to more of the lecture stuff, right, more of the right. academic stuff that we started with. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that talk is probably going to tie in with his new book, which is a translation of the Dutch book uh, uh, that he wrote two years ago. Uh, yeah. And it's going to be called, ooh, I forgot. I only know the Dutch name. It's called The Right of the Fastest in Dutch. Yeah. Uh, I, and then the I English think the, is, You're talking about the book, right? Yeah. Movement. 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 I was going to so say it's it, movement. Just came it's, out. It's, mm -hmm. It should be arriving this week, actually. So, yeah, I, oh, I, excellent. I purchased it and it should be arriving this week. Now, you mentioned, uh, you know, somebody helping out in Toronto. So uh, you, you're on Victoria Island or no Vancouver Island now. Right. Mm -hmm. And but you have uh, roots in Toronto, too. Right. Uh, roots in Toronto. And uh, okay. I, I basically grew up in Toronto. I okay. immigrated to Canada when I was five uh, from China. Okay. And, and, you know, I, I was in Beijing right up until I was five. And that used to be, right. uh, I, I'd say, as, as much cycling as, as there is in Amsterdam today, right? Yeah, We're looking at yeah. very low um, private vehicle mode share, uh, not out of choice, but really out of necessity right, because right. Uh, there yeah. were just no cars available. So to get around, people rode their bikes, took public transit. Uh, and that's before the subway network was really expanded, right, yeah. in, in Beijing. Yeah. Uh, so everyone rode their bikes. It was very... and. and and the Chinese uh, government had a monopoly on, on bike production, right? Oh, so there was that was Flying was, Pigeon, yeah. was kind of a state-owned uh, bicycle company. Yeah. And, and you, you basically had the choice of one type of bike. Right, and it was kind of like the Dutch-style cruiser. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, what we've got playing in the background here is, uh, is your review, uh, your trip that you did to Copenhagen and, and you took a look at the, the transit systems there. You took a look at the pedestrian environment. You took a look at the cycling environment. And then specifically you drilled in on the cycling bridges in, in you know, that area. And so your other videos were, uh, were, were named the, the boxing or unboxing of mm -hmm. the cities. Well, we're still trying to kind of like figure, figure out. out a good title for it. You okay. know, YouTube, you can change the thumbnails indefinitely. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the series is called city and Boxed, And yeah. I thought, well, maybe I'll do better if I name it like 
urban mobility review or, or something, which is, yeah. which is what I do at the end. Yeah. Uh, but the thumbnails might change at some yeah, point. Yeah. I'll so like you're testing, you're testing the, those two different names and, and, and yeah. all that. So, but works. in general, why don't you walk us through what the, what the strategy is uh, for these right. videos that you've been doing? Uh, so basically, I visit a city and I, and I review the urban mobility of a city uh, through a tourist perspective. Right. So I arrive at the city. I don't have a car. Uh, I'm just a guy trying to get around and see all the things. Uh, and and as I'm going through this process, I'll, I'll I'll try and figure out like where the pain points are, what things like really delight me. Uh, for example, the the uh, the boat thing the the public transport boat bus in Copenhagen yeah, that, yeah. that I review in this video it's just like it's it's a delightful thing right and yeah because it's and electric each city, yeah and each city has like these cool yeah. weird quirks and features um and and, and you know a, a, maybe a, on the the bike world it's unpopular to admit but I also follow uh like uh, like tech channels and then the the automotive reviewer uh, Doug Demuro. So okay. these videos are actually like almost uh, precisely like the urban mobility version of a car channel where uh. Uh, where I give it a, a urban mobility score. So instead of like a, a car ranking, I would give it you know points on public transport, b- bikes and walking. So it's kind of a play. And some people in the comments have caught, caught onto that yeah. uh, of, uh, of, of automobile reviews because right. they're cool. They've got millions of views. Why can't we have the same thing for cities? Right. right. So that's kind of my inspiration uh, uh, for, for the series. And, yeah. and it's almost like modeled exclusively based on that format, but for sustainable transport. Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, how many cities have you done thus far? Ooh, so, wow, seven? Okay. <laughs> I, I believe it's seven. And then we have scheduled, uh, this is going to be more Eastern Europe this year. So I'm taking a trip in August uh, and we're doing uh, Berlin, Hamburg. Uh, we're doing Warsaw and then coming down to uh, probably something in Slovakia and then over towards uh, Budapest, Hungary. So cities are to be changed. I might have the wrong names, but it'll be more of an Eastern Europe uh, variant this year for all the cities. Got it, got it. So you're you're about ready to, to head back over there then uh, to, to get back on the road and do some stuff. Uh, so w- w- when do you uh, head back uh, uh, into Europe? Uh, probably gonna be around, so uh, first off is gonna be summer school. Uh, it's called Remaking the Street. It's it's going to be really cool. So uh, one week in Munich, one week in Rotterdam. Uh, it was also funded by the European Institute of Technology. Uh, and basically what we're doing is we're doing street experiments for two weeks, right? So we're going to build a street experiment in Munich. And then in Rotterdam, we're taking all the students on the train. And then we're going to discuss street experiments for a more uh, academic perspective. Okay. So we're going to be building and analyzing, and that would be like the gist of a two week summer school um, uh, okay. program. And then I'm going to film after the filming I do a cycling research board conference is coming up. Um, end of the, uh, in October, I do my PhD defense. And then be- between those two dates, uh, we have, uh, the designing the cycling city, uh, masterclass, right. which, we have queued up right there. So that'll be uh, end of September, the 28th to 30th. Whew, so it's going to be quite a yeah. trip. And I have to stay within the three month limit that the EU imposes, right? For, oh, for business wow. travel. Yeah, yeah. So I got to cram it in there. You're going to cram it all in. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. Fantastic. Uh, so, but, so you won't be able to make it to uh, uh, Velo City that's coming up. Velo City is, is huge. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a huge thing. Uh, I, I, it's a huge party. I don't yeah. know. Um, I, I don't enjoy it as much. I, okay. I, I like conferences where they yeah, yeah. Where have at least the opportunity or the, the chance of knowing everyone. And I find uh, about 100 to 200 people is a, a good range for yeah, like a yeah, two yeah. or three day conference. Yeah. Uh, Velo City is just, just too big. And because I'm self-funded, right? Like yeah, yeah. when I expense businesses, it's actually my business. So it's kind yeah. of like not someone else's business. I was like, mm, it's, it's a bit steep, but, right, but I right, do right. think about it every year. Yeah. And it's a great place to just meet everyone in one go. If there was one conference you go to, yeah. I'd probably do Velo City. But yeah. since I'm going to a few, I get a chance to meet everyone just in different places. Yeah. 
I, I hear you. And, and uh, yeah. uh, my sort of go to one conference that I've gone to every single year for the past decade or so has always been uh, CNU, the Congress for the New Urbanism. And so that's sort of my my ohana, you know, from a Hawaiian uh, term, you know, uh, the people that that I've been close to over the over the past mm-hmm. decade. Uh, but after interviewing uh, Jill Warren, I was like, ah, you know what? I think I need to be able to get over to Velo City. And so uh, I, I won't be able to do it this year, uh, but uh, it's definitely on my uh, radar for the next two years for sure. So it's a huge party, yeah. you know, yeah. like one has to do it at least once. That's, that's well, my and, take and on I'm Bella kind City. of strategizing it uh, mm-hmm. along the lines of sort of like what you're talking about is, uh, you know, spending an extended period of time there and doing a lot of filming and, and hitting other things. And, and so I'm looking at that going, there's a lot of cities that I want to profile. There's a lot of stuff that I want to, a lot of people I want to talk to. A lot of topics I want to dive deeper into, so I'm like, yeah, I could, I could keep myself busy for you know a month, two months, easily. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do Do you mind if I ask you about uh, about Austin? Because I, I got a chance to be there. For oh a, yeah, a, yeah, a, absolutely. A couple of days. Yeah. Um, so it 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 seems like uh, the hot spot where, where people who leave California are like going to Nevada and yeah. and, and Austin um, has from a resident perspective, have, have things like really changed? Do you feel like a, a new demographic coming in? Um, or has, has things been like pretty much the same throughout? Um, well, just yeah, in terms of the I, vibe? I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, obviously things are changing a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, relevant to sort of our world and what we are, yeah. are, are talking about. Um, about a decade ago, um, the uh, the city of Austin and the Dutch Cycling Embassy and the Think Bike Program had their initial um, Think Bike workshop here locally. And mm-hmm. so um, there's, there's a Dutch-inspired <laughs> thing that's happening here. And so one of the most exciting things that we're seeing in this realm is the fact that we're seeing a build-out of a, an all-ages and abilities Dutch-inspired cycle network. And so one of the, the playlists that I have on my YouTube channel here is, is that, is just that. It's the, the Dutch-inspired uh, build-out of, of Austin's network. And one of the great things that that is able to provide, because we do have an influx of so many people, especially young professionals that want to move here, they don't want to have a car and they don't want to be out stuck in traffic. And so uh, building out uh, a comprehensive network of high quality, high comfort cycling facilities is uh, is you know, really coming, you know, together. And so, uh, they're at about 50% of the network completion at this point and, uh, pushing hard to try to, you know, get more stuff down and, uh, yeah. And there's going to be some big celebrations, you know, it later this year, uh, the Dutch cycling embassy will be here. Uh, they're going to be celebrating that 10 year anniversary of the thing, the first, uh, think bike workshop and really profiling the ad- you know, the advances, the accomplishments. And I think it's making a huge difference. We're, we're, I've seen it, you know, in the eight years or so that I've been here really noticing, you know, how much more uh, comfortable it is to get out there. And, Mm -hmm. and especially the younger generations, they are digging it. You know, they're getting out on bikes, they're getting out on the scooters and getting around town. I'm not sure how much time you had uh, to spend in the downtown area here where some of the the real true Dutch inspired infrastructure is, but it's really, it's quite extraordinary actually. It's, it's really interesting because uh, the, 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 the rest of the state, Austin is in yeah. Texas, yes. uh, the land where, you know, pickup trucks in Texas get their own like Texas edition. Right? <laughs> exactly. uh, and <laughs> it's the only state that uh, you get your own pickup truck uh, variant. Yeah. Um, it, it, and, and Austin is like the, uh, this oasis in, in Texas yeah. uh, where, where, where things that really are different. You guys have great parks. Um, that's the thing I noticed. Like I've been downtown, great bike cleaning 
things, yeah. but also uh, great parks in the surrounding uh, suburbs. Um, and, and the way that the streets laid out is sort of curvilinear. It's, it's quite pleasant uh, to ride through. Yeah. Uh, and it, it really contrasts with the, the rest of the municipalities in, in Texas, right? Like definitely not a Houston Right. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 very cool of a gem. It's it's just too bad it's in Texas because that kind of <laughs> you know interferes with the image of it, right? It, it does. <laughs> we just assume things. Yeah. yeah. Well and, and even and even, you know, cities like you know, Houston. Houston's really mm. working hard to build out a, a you know, a, an off street network of pathways and they're taking advantage of the bayous and all of that and you know, Dallas is working hard. So I, I know what you're saying. And, you know, many, many cities in, in Texas have a long way to go. Uh, and certainly Austin is leading the way. But some of these other cities are also working really, really hard to to catch up and and Absolutely. to make it a, a more qual- high quality of life uh, environment. So uh, but yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a, a little plug right there. You know, earlier was uh, about the the Dutch inspired um, you know playlist uh, out on the channel here. If you haven't seen it, folks, pop on over there, <laughs> click through there. I mean, it's really it's really tr- you know quite heartwarming to see a North American city, especially a Southern North American city, um, that is is really putting together some high quality you know high comfort you know facilities in, in, in a network. So. So you, you mentioned something in, in there earlier about uh, your business and, <laughs> and, and, uh-huh. and, you know, being able to, um, uh, you know, kind of package things in terms of like, you know, when you're traveling and you're, you, know, you might have to expense things off from a business perspective. And you mentioned it earlier, you're delving into a new business venture. So let's pop over and, and uh, talk a little bit about uh, what you're doing here in this retail yeah. environment. Absolutely. So, um, so, so basically last year, uh, I kind of thought about the, the Dutch swap feats. Maybe you can put yeah. that up because that was the inspiration for this. Cause oh, whether yeah, or not this definitely. works out, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll pop over there feats. in just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so swap feats is a, a very a popular, it's a bike subscription service, uh, yeah. in uh, the Netherlands and, and basically they're in all over Europe now. Um, and, and, Basically, what they do is for a monthly uh, price, you get uh, service repair and rental of a bike all included. So I, I thought that was a very cool model because uh, a lot of uh, students end up uh, buying uh, or not buying, so subscribing to the service. Uh, and instead of buying a bike where you kind of have to deal with the chains and, and service and all that, bike depreciation, uh, this company delivers it to your door. And then when you're done with the bike, they'll, they'll take it away. So especially if you're somewhere for a medium term, so not a day or two as a tourist, but uh, if you want to use the bike and you're not quite sure, uh, you want to try it for a few months for daily life. It, it's a very cool service to get people just just involved enough for, for, for the right price that yeah. it's not too much of a commitment to actually spring, you know, a thousand dollars or like 700 euros for a, a nice bike. You could get it like an e-bike, for example. You could try it for a few months for a for, uh, hundred or two hundred dollars. It's a much more acceptable price range, um, especially when you're cross shopping with cars that have usually have financing or lease uh uh, options attached to it, which we see a lot less with with bikes, right? So uh, that's the Swap Feeds uh, site there, uh, and and basically it's it's very user friendly. It's a really app based business, and in the app you can uh, you know order a bike or you can order a repair, and and someone will come within the day usually and and take care of it. So I thought that would be something really cool uh, to to start in Canada, and that that was the and the genesis of of Flex Bike. Um, Little did I know going in <laughs> that, uh, so, so when COVID started, a, a container, a 40-foot equivalent container on, on a ship from China is about uh, $2,000 to ship right. over to Vancouver port, right? Um, so COVID happened, uh, and now it's about 10 times that. So to get a container of bikes over is 20000 Yeah. Right, which is significantly... Right it, it's insane. Yeah. Um, and then all the uncertainties there with also when you got the lockdowns over in China, then your bike factory is shut down and, yeah. and your shipments get delayed and all that. So it turns out to be uh, too big of a, 
of a, a of a slice for me to to take on, given my experience. So so kind of flex bike have been put on pause, okay. and what I'm doing now is I partnered with someone who actually has a supply chain, uh, and we're doing uh, basically pure retail. Okay. Uh, and and hopefully I can learn some lessons from there. Uh, the the company is Energy One ca and uh, we ship to Western Canada and hopefully I can take those lessons kind of build out a supply chain and then eventually start you know uh, applying the same ideas um, towards a subscription model um, in the meantime zig which started in Toronto uh, has now expanded into Vancouver and they do the exact same thing I was gonna do so ah, um, okay. so basically, Hopefully, you know, this is w- what you want to see, you know, when you start a business for change is that hopefully someone else has already done it. So then you don't have to bother. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, if, if that takes off all the more success to them, uh, because that's something I think is, is sorely needed in, yeah. in the North American, like urban market. Uh, yeah. And I don't know what's going on in the States, but I hope something, you know, like Cargaroo, uh, someone will, will eventually pick up on it. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and someone can, uh, you know, have, have the, the risk tolerance and the, the knowledge of the industry uh, to actually be able to make the economics of it work. Yeah. Right. And I, so, and I pulled this one up because uh, mm-hmm. uh, Yos and I uh, talked about it in, in a previous episode uh, just recently when we were talking about the International Cargo Bike uh, Festival which I will be heading out to attend at the end of August, October. So uh, I won't be, I won't be there for your defense and at the beginning of October, but I'll be there <laughs> at the end of October. But uh, yeah, just brilliant. This idea of a, um, you know, being able to do a, a sharing type of system, a subscription type of system. Um, I love the swap feeps. I, 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 you know, in fact, I reached out to the CEO and said, Hey, let me know if you're interested in coming to North America. And he basically replied, uh, no, no intention of being there yet. <laughs> but I noticed, you know, when you look at the, the number of countries that he's, he is expanding and uh, yeah. uh, getting into the, the French uh, and United Kingdom, Italy. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you, though. I love that idea of a subscription service. I love the idea of a subscription service, especially for e-bikes and cargo bikes that are incredibly expensive when you're buying, you know, high quality equipment. Um, And so having that ability to do a a subscription and or a sharing type of system like the Cargaroo, uh, brilliant. Yeah. So eventually, you know, why why do I like pursue this business? Because so far, my projects have basically been sponsored by taxpayer money, right? PhD, the European Institute of Technology, which is the EU money. Um, But I I think like for cycling to be truly successful uh, and and for it to be real, uh, for it to really take off, it it requires some industry support, right? And and yeah. I take lessons from you know the the early twentieth century. How did cars get so popular, right? It was the the automotive lobby, right, funneling money towards governments and saying, hey, we need to build some more roads, uh, and you know we'll lobby to make that happen. Um, I, I I wonder if because bicycle infrastructure is so cheap financially. Right, um, that uh, you know, one percent of a, a of the road budget, e- even that, like most cities are are far away from one percent. You know, maybe you get if you're lucky, you get zero point one, and the best cities have maybe one or two percent, and then even the best Dutch cities have like two or three percent, right? right, right. Um, which is in a range that's like makes lobbying kind of still feasible, right? Imagine yeah. like part of the sales of, of, of the bicycle industry in general could go towards uh, an organization that lobbies for more bike lanes or, or some financial contribution to uh, the infrastructure on which you ride bikes. So that, that's kind of a model that I thought would be pretty interesting because if it's self-funded, then you re- remove the financial imperative, not re- completely, but if you could co-fund it with like bicycle industry money, then the only lobbying left is to say to people, hey, uh, bike lanes are a positive contribution to your community, right? Which is uh, the other side of the, the pushback. Um, I don't know how important finances are, like what, 
like I don't imagine going from 0.1% to 1% of a municipal budget is actually a problem, but uh, it's better if, if we could say, Hey, that we could co-finance that right through maybe private industry. Um, so that's kind of where, where I got thinking uh, is like, how can we really speed up the process and just remove that barrier completely, remove the excuses um, and, and, and just focus on, you know, showing people that, organizing our cities this way is this actually a, a, a positive contribution yeah. so that's that's kind of where i thought it'd be nice to have uh some spare change to to throw out the problem it, it, yeah, it's, yeah. it definitely helps right yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah um for those who may not uh, be super super familiar with your 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 current home um what's it like there you know from a cycling perspective uh and, and Van- vancouver island Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's paradise. It's basically, I don't know, it's like uh, if you've seen Jurassic Park, you know, like it's, it's a, it's a temp, the whole thing is basically a temperate rainforest, okay. uh, right? It's, it's uh, Pacific Northwest, so it's, it's in the, it actually dips down quite a bit below the 49th parallel, which is the normal normal border between the U.S. and Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it, it's pretty much uh, west of Seattle if, if, because it dips down so much. Um, the, the island is only connected by ferries, but they're huge ferries. They're like, like biggest, nor- they'll swallow up 18 wheelers, right? Cause that's right. the only way cargo gets here. Um, it's, it's about a, a million people on here. Uh, and it's the Victoria is the, the warmest city in Canada. So, oh. so up in Canada, right? We, we yeah, don't yeah, get yeah. to escape winter. We don't have a Hawaii Island. Right. So this is, this is the best we do a, an incredibly rainy, yeah. but above freezing winter experience. Yeah. Uh, and, and I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll settle for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll settle for that. Well, it's par- like, it's, otherwise it's, I got Victoria, especially is it, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, city. Uh, and is that the city that you're, you're located in or are you in a different city? I'm slightly north of there. Uh, okay. so, so I'm, I'm like middle of the Island, mid Island. Okay. Um, and, uh, but it's still on the, the, the east side so we get the shelter from the, the mountains on the right. island so so we don't have an, as much rain as vancouver it's about half uh, the right. amount of rain that vancouver gets uh seattle's probably up there almost at vancouver level as much so um it's it's a rainforest with with uh, with reduced rain um and then it's very nice because uh there there's some really great arterial cycling routes, uh, in the city of Victoria. Um, uh, I, I'd say they're, they're pretty much up to cycle highway standards. Um, and it's, uh, it's small enough that you, you can actually feasibly do the whole thing by bike, right? Right. Victoria is probably the metropolitan area, uh, just under half a million. Um, and, what is amazing here is uh, the the recreational activities, right? I, I'm I'm a mountain biker. I love mountain biking, oh, okay. um, and uh, and and it's it's a great because there are so many mountains and and there's it doesn't freeze and and the summers are relatively mild. It's it's a it's a great place for 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 sporting activities uh, for right. cycling. So it's it's kind of cool. In the Netherlands, I miss mountain biking. That was like kind of yeah, the, yeah. the key reason why I came back is because it's, uh, it's flat. It's great for rec- it's great for commuting, but right. Uh, right. there's no mountains to come down. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah, no yeah. jumps happening there right? yeah. <laughs> on your OMA feet. Yeah. Uh, so that ultimately was the decision to, to come back to Canada. Fantastic. Uh, and, and here I am. Yeah, so yeah I, I, I had an opportunity to visit uh, Victoria once, and uh, mm-hmm. it was part of CNU. In fact, I had the opportunity to film uh, Todd Littman. He uh, led. A, was a that bike your tour. film? That was Todd my film. Todd yeah. on the bike tour. That was yeah. yours. Yeah. Hey, I was like, that's so cool. I should, I should do a bike cast with them. And I just never got around. To yeah, it. yeah. Well, he, he's he's <laughs> very nice, very nice. generous, and and mm-hmm. and he's also been a past guest here on the the podcast. Um, the audio only version. Um, I didn't have the, uh, the, the YouTube, uh, video up at that point in time, but, uh, that's good stuff. Well, George, is there anything that we haven't talked about yet that you want to make sure we, uh, leave the audience with? Uh, I, I think that's, that's a pretty thorough discussion. Um, and I, I, I just wanted to, you know, wish everyone well, whichever angle that you're attacking the cycling problem from, 
uh, that uh, they're, they're all important pieces to the puzzle. So it could be research, it could be in government, it could be in academia, uh, it could be on, on the retail sales side. And we, we all have a role to play. It could be from YouTube, you know, social media. So whatever your thing is, uh, you can make your contribution, you know, yeah, you, you can yeah. make it fit, right? Well, and I'll pull this up as as sort of a parting, um, you know, image for us to talk about. And and again, this is coming up at the end of September, September 28th through the 30th. It's, uh, it, it, you know, you're going to end up in Rotterdam, but you've mentioned that there's a, a portion of it in uh, in Germany, right? Sorry, di- different. Uh, different. Remaking class. the street is different from the semester class. That'll be a two week thing, but the master class it'll be in Rotterdam for uh, three days. Oh, that's right. Cause yeah. the other ones are two week. That's a summer. That's the summer, summer school. Yeah. Summer uh, school. Applications already passed. So the, I, okay, I just mentioned it. You can't do the summer school this year, but you can but do you this can, one. Exactly. Boom, get on it. folks. <laughs> Boom. So who, t- who would you be the typical person who would participate in, in this, uh, in person, uh, designing the cycling city masterclass? It's a very good question. I've got a few emails about this and we're going to do a flipped classroom, right? So whatever, we're trying to go for the intermediate to advanced uh, category, right? Okay. Um, so professionals, urban professionals, uh, if you work in a city, government capacity, consulting, you're welcome. And then, uh, you know, basically you, you as a participant are going to be the resource. Sure, we'll have people coming in, teaching you all the Dutch stuff, but uh, in terms of contextualizing the information, uh, uh, you're the one who knows best, right? For example, we can't teach you about how to build bike lanes in Austin. Right. You know, it's, it's up to John to, to tell us how to do it. We, we can only be, you know, of assistance and provide you with the resources. So we're going to turn it on its head. And the philosophy is, you know, the, the less we teach, uh, the better it is for you to learn, right? So, so we're really there as facilitators uh, with big brains but uh, the students are there to bring the context. So hopefully we're aiming at intermediate advanced, but it really depends on what everyone brings to the table. So it'd be a, it'd be a fun experience. Yeah. And I would imagine that part of stimulating the conversation and the ability to really dive into this is just the fact that you'll be able to go out and experience some of the, the, the city. Is that correct? A lot of experiencing, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, a lot of bike rides, uh, and uh, and and some great venues that we're putting together. Right, we'll be yeah. going between some venues, uh, and and we use travel time as a time to learn. So yeah. it's not dead time. We're, yeah, yeah, we're moving between venues. It's a time to experience the city. So not yeah. a minute is lost, really. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 this is a topic that I've uh, discussed multiple times, and and when I had uh, uh, Dr. Meredith Glazer on the the podcast, you know, we talked about this whole knowledge exchange thing, and the reason why uh, these types of opportunities are so incredibly powerful. It gets you out from your your normal routine in your normal location, gets you into a place where you can really kind of see things differently and and absorb, and uh, and ideally, hopefully not traveling solo, you know, hopefully you might have a colleague or two with you from wherever you're from to be able to, to be like experiencing things at the same time and then talking about them. Uh, and, and it's, it's very, very, very helpful. And, uh, I hope to do, uh, you know, active towns related types of study tours, uh, in, in the future, uh, both domestically, you know, here in North America, as well as, uh, internationally, um, uh, over in, in Europe, uh, for that reason, because I've seen the impact of it. It's probably one of the things that has really helped accelerate um, the progress here in Austin is that so many key decision makers uh, had that opportunity to get over to uh, the Netherlands and and other locations as well um, and really helped move, you know, grease the skids and help. Oh, this is what you're talking about. Oh, okay. You know, it's like, it, because the it really plants the seed as to what is possible. So, you know, huge opportunity. If you do have a chance to get over there, uh, please, you know, again, September 28th through the 30th. Um, and uh, it's, I can't, I can't speak highly enough about this. I mean, the, the folks at the Urban Cycling Institute, Humankind, we had Lior on the podcast just a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, can't say enough about it. 
get on it, get over there, click on through. I'll make sure the link is in the show notes and in the, in the video description below. George, thank you so much. It's been an absolute joy having you on the Active Towns podcast. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Sean. Let's do this again sometime. Absolutely. Hey, and you know, I, I need to do some exploring up on Vancouver Island. I mean, I, I only had that one afternoon there in Victoria. I need to, you know, you know, do some mountain bike riding with you. Well, I got tons of e-bikes too. So whatever you want, you have a and store. Tons of too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a deal. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into this episode with George. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, <laughs> share it with a friend, uh, leave a comment. And uh, if you haven't done so already, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Uh, just make sure to hit that subscription button and ring the notifications bell right next to it. Gives you an opportunity to customize your notifications. And uh, hey, Again, if you are interested in attending the Designing Cycling Cities Masterclass, it's the end of September. Again, the links will be in the show notes as well as in the video description down below. So check it out. Uh, highly recommend uh, the, the folks there at the Urban Cycling Institute. I've had an opportunity to take a diff couple different online classes and, uh, and I know Many of these professors, uh, personally, they are amazing. So great opportunity to uh, experience the Netherlands, have an opportunity to work with uh, other delegates, other people in the class uh, and learn from them. And as George mentions, uh, that's the most important part is being able to bring that knowledge and be able to share that, uh, that knowledge exchange that takes place. Very, very important and helpful. Hey, two more things before I let you go. Please head on over to the Active Town store to check out some of the fun streets are for people swag I have out there. Get that in focus. Focus. There it is. <laughs> and also, uh, Patreon. If you're enjoying my content, please head on over to patreon.com slash active towns. Uh, my patrons do get early access to this content and also uh, it's commercial free. So it's well worth the buck, two bucks, three bucks, five bucks, $25 per month. I've got one. <laughs> Anyways, uh, whatever you can afford, um, it's greatly appreciated. It helps me continue to produce this content and get it out to you. So uh, very much appreciated. Um, if financially you just can't do that, but you can at least um, you know give a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and again, share the content with a friend, recommend the channel. Uh, whatever support you can provide is greatly appreciated. And uh, hey, until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you a check activity, health, and happiness. Cheers.